Hey everybody, welcome to Faithway Baptist Church. I'm Pastor Kevin Bell. I'm thankful that you're here. Whether you're a first time visitor, you, whether you've been here for a long time, uh, I pray that today is gonna speak to your heart. Today's service specifically has been bathed in prayer and I hope that God speaks to your heart today. If you are a first time visitor, we have welcome cards and we'd love to get contact uh, information from you. And one of the things I always guarantee is that uh, if you fill these out, uh, it's guaranteed you'll be prayed for this week, and uh, maybe we can get to know your family a little bit better. We have a gift waiting on you at the Welcome Center, uh, in addition to other literature that you uh, may want to read about the church and information about the church. You can also check out our app and see some of the uh, events that are taking place in our church right now and in the coming weeks. Thank you for coming today. We're taking a group of teenagers to Fuel Camp this year on June 20th to the 24th. Lord willing, this is going to be a week that changes their life forever, and we would love for your team to be a part of it with us. There's a cost that goes along with the camp, and that's $285. We don't want that number to deter you from going, so if need be, we can help as a church to take $100 off of that price to make it more manageable. And, I, and the other thing I want to throw out there is we don't want anybody to not go simply because of the cost. And so if any teen wants to go, we'll make it happen. We have some sponsors lined up. Uh, we have some people that could use some work done around the house. And we want these teenagers to be able to, to go to camp with us. So we're going to do everything in our power to get any team that wants to go to be able to join us for Fuel Camp June 20th to June 24th. If you have any questions or if you have somebody that would like to go, see Race and he'll get you the answers to the questions that you may have. If you have a child that's seven to 12 years old, we have a special camp uh, ready for them too. It's called Grow Camp. Our Grow Camp is July 5th to the 8th, and it's at the Wilderness Retreat Lodge in Camden, Ohio. We have a group of responsible adults going, and the leadership there is great, and I know the kids are gonna have a ton of fun, and they're gonna learn about Jesus all at the same time. The cost for that camp is $215, but again, like Fuel Camp, I wanna make sure that every kid that really wants to go has an opportunity to go. So if you need the church to chip in 100 bucks on that price to make it more manageable, we would be happy to do that and bring it down to $115. And again, if there's somebody who just can't afford that and they just really like their kids to go, we'll make it happen. So just let us know. To register, I want you to see Tanner and he'll answer the questions that you need to, to know about that. Our theme for this year's VBS is Incredible Me. God wants our young people to know that they're His perfect creation and that they are one in a minion. So mark your calendars to join us July 10th through the 13th. That's a Sunday night through Wednesday night from 6 to 8 p.m. Registration starts at 5.30 p.m. There's a sign-up sheet in the lobby to be a part of this great outreach, so be sure to stop by today and sign up. If you have any questions, please see Angie Jordan. Again, on July 10th through the 13th, the teens will be having a youth revival called Summer on the Mount for 6th through 12th grade from 6 to 8 p.m. at the new church property. Last year we saw God move in a mighty way uh, with teens getting saved and baptized and getting right with God. This year we're expecting no less. We'll have games, and prizes, music, giveaways, and preaching. So if you're a teen, don't miss what God has for you this year at Summer on the Mount. If you missed any of these events and the details of them, just go to our app and check out the event section and it'll have all the details outlined for anything that you may have missed writing down. We don't do all these things just to fill up your calendars. We do them to glorify the Lord and to work together for one common cause and that's for His glory and to get the gospel out to more people that desperately need to hear Jesus. As we continue on through this God fast, Let's keep that same heart that our mission right now is to draw closer to the Lord than we've ever been in our entire life. And let's begin that right here and right now. Let's worship the Lord together. Hey, there we go. All right. Well, good morning <laughs> once again. Uh, if you're visiting with us, we're so glad that you're here. Let's pray, praise and worship the Lord together. Yeah. 
seated. We'll have our ushers come forward, please. Receive our tithes and offerings.
right, kiddos, you can come on up if you have anything to give to the Lord as well. Kids have been doing an excellent job at uh, bringing in funds to the Lord and to His work up at our new church property. They are raising money currently for their new doors that's going out to uh, their new playground. It's going to be awesome. Stand one more time. Praise with a few more songs here.
Gracious God and Heavenly Father, Lord, we praise your great name, Lord. You're worthy of all of our praise. Father, I pray just for such a sweet spirit this morning of unity. And God, I pray that you uh, just give a boldness to our pastor. And uh, Lord, we just lift your name up. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. Amen. Come on up, kiddos. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need the boys on this side and then the girls over on this side. More boys than girls? Yeah. I need the boys over here. The boys over here. Yeah, I know you want to stand by these girls. These bowl boys, I don't know. You watch out for them. Um, it's going to be in God's house. Amen? Now, if you guys um, knew where you're coming to this morning, you knew you are coming to a Bible preaching church. Amen? Uh, and hopefully you expect somebody who's not scared to say things that need to be said. And so since it's Pride Month, uh, I just thought it'd be a good beneficial thing for me as a pastor to make sure I'm instilling in these kids things that they need to hear. Because they're hearing all kinds of other things on TV and commercials. Commercials are crazy, right? Did you see how easily they split up boys and girls? You guys did a great job. All right. Give these guys a hand. It was real easy. They got it right away. They know. Hey, you guys know this? Let me tell you boys something. The only thing that God uses to make men of God is boys. Do you know that? The only thing, the only person that God is ever going to use to make a man of God who's going to do great things for God is a, is a little boy. Of course, some of you guys are bigger boys. Girls, hey, you know the only thing that God's going to use to make a powerful woman of God? 
a little girl. He only uses little girls to make powerful women of God. Do you know that? Yep, he does. And I can't wait for the next couple of weeks. I'm going to keep encouraging in different little ways, okay? All right, boys, thank God for the fact that he made you a boy. Because he's going to use you in a powerful way. Amen, church? Don't you hope and don't you pray that God is going to use these boys to turn them into men of God? Yes. And girls, don't you forget to thank God that he made you a little girl. Because he is going to use you in a powerful way. And he is going to use you to make you a powerful woman of God. I'm praying. You praying, church? All right. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's, let's do this. Boys are going to pray first, and then the girls are going to pray. Okay? Boys, you guys pray with me first. Dear Lord, thank you for making me who I am. Help me to grow up to be a godly man. I love you, Jesus. Now, girls, let's pray, girls. Dear Lord, I love you. Thank you for making me a little girl. Help me to be a great woman of God one day. And all God's people said, amen. All right. You going to preach with me today? You will. You would? Where's your mom and dad at? Oh, man, I didn't even see you guys. I mean, you, you want to you wanna read a verse with me? Come on. All right. Here, here, sit down right here. Oh, this is great. This morning, guys, I got in, and you ever had the blue screen come up on your computer? <laughs> I've, I saw my computer do something I've never seen a computer do in my 35, 30, my 35, 36, babe. 35. In my 35 years, I've never seen it do what it did this morning. And so uh, I lost all my notes for this morning's message. And as soon as I did, um, as soon as I realized it, uh, a preacher friend of mine sent me a, a verse in Acts. And I said, wow, that was a timely thing. Let me get there. Oh, where's it at? I think it was. Hey, I wrote it down. Acts eleven twenty one. Oh yeah. All right. How old are you? Five. Five. Okay. So there's might be some words that are a little difficult. Me and you read it together. Okay. I'll read it with you. This is what the preacher sent me this morning. Right when I realized that my notes were all gone. Okay. Read it with me. And the hand of the Lord. Can you read that word, Lord? Lord, that's one of the most important words you could ever learn how to read. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the what? Lord. Say Lord real loud. Lord. Yep. Give him a hand. All right. Now you can go to class, buddy. <laughs> he helped me preach a little bit this morning. <laughs> That's his first message, mom and dad. Maybe, I don't know. And so, uh, so he sent me that, and I thought, well, you know what? I, I'm with you. The hand of the Lord was with them, and I believe that the hand of the Lord's with our church. Amen? And uh, I do believe, and I look forward to seeing God work, and uh, sometimes we just have to be sensitive to, sensitive to the Lord, and know when God's doing something, and know when God's um, wanting you to go a different course or change things up just a little bit. And we just need to be sensitive about those kinds of things because I don't want to miss God, do you? And so, so I get the blue screen, we get that, and then uh, Ryan was back there with me and we prayed and prayed that God would just work today out. And then as soon as we got done praying, I flipped my Bible open and wouldn't you know it, the page of notes that I originally wrote for this message, they just were open right there where I opened it up. And God's just like, here's some old notes, just use those. So it could be a short message, it could be a long message, I don't know. Um, we're in a God fast right now, and you know we're going to be in Isaiah 58 in a second, but let me, let's, let's launch off with a verse that I 
infused into last week's message. If you remember last week, man, I machine gunned some scripture to you. And so um, I'm quizzing you today on which one of those that you memorized this week. Just kidding. Come on. Oh, you want a joke? You want a joke? Nobody, I thought I'd get a, I thought I'd get a laugh out of that last thing I said. I don't usually give jokes. My wife is saying, no. But that means I have to now, right? Because I can't say that, right? Why did the chicken cross the road? <laughs> yes, uh, that's counting that as a win. All right, <laughs> let's get back spiritual again. <laughs> Chris, you like that? That was pretty good. <laughs> All right, we're getting spiritual. All right, you know we're going to be in Acts 58. Let's look at Proverbs 28. You're going to need to flip to some of these with me because, again, because of uh, this morning's unique situation, those guys have no idea where my verses are today for the screen. Proverbs 28, 27 um, is, is the first one that I just want to hit, just kind of Springboard us a little bit. Again, we're in a God fast, and right now the purpose of the God fast, and we're just we're coming into the home stretch of it, really. And I hope you've been digging in, and I hope that you've been watching God do some really neat things. I've seen God do some really neat things over the last several weeks. Uh, I'm hoping that you have. This week is one of, is the last kind of like challenge weeks that I have for you, and then next week is is a, man we get to have a lot of fun and talk about leaving a legacy and things like that. Uh, but today I'm going to, I'm going to, through the Holy Spirit, Lord willing, um, challenge you so God can convict you and maybe change you and help maybe shift some things around in your life that need to be adjusted. Okay? You with me? You with me? All right, so in Proverbs 28, 27, the Bible says this, And he that giveth unto the poor shall not lack, but he that, what? Hideth his eyes shall have many a curse. Last week I hit this verse because Last week's piece of the God fast is that we should feed those that are hungry, that we should clothe those that are naked, that we should bring those that are cast out to your house. Remember, we're talking about blessing people and helping people and just, just giving somebody just a little bit more just to get them by or, or to bl- or really help them in a, in a big way. Or It might be one person, it might be a group of people. That was last week. And I hit this verse, and it says, He that giveth unto the portion not lack, but he that what? hideth his eyes shall have many a curse. Now, let me th- th- say something that you already know. Just because you get like this doesn't mean what's out there went away. You know what I'm saying? He that hideth his eyes shall have many a curse. And the reason is because we do this and we know that whatever's beyond this doesn't go away. We just don't want to have any part of it. You with me? Okay, now we're coming to Isaiah 58. Keep that thought in mind because that same word hide is coming in. It's our main scripture in the God fast in Isaiah 58. <clears throat> We've been doing an eight-week fast right now. The, the first week I talked about in verse 6, uh, Isaiah 58, 6, it says, It's not this the fast that I have chosen, to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, that, the, that you break every yoke. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house, when thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and, and here's this week, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh is this week's, okay? So in the weeks leading up to this, if you're just kind of getting in late or you just strolled in today, thank you for coming, by the way. But what we did was we took a a, a, a segment of each of those and we turned them into a a week of our fast. And so we loosed the banes of wickedness one week. We fasted from sin. We undid the heavy burdens one week and we, we targeted emotional burdens that we carry. We let the oppressed go free, and that's where uh, th- these words down here are. This is the progression of forgiveness. Uh, if you have strugg- struggles with forgiveness, come talk to me, and I'll walk you through this progression. I think it might be helpful for you. We did that. Another week, we, we, we talked about breaking every yoke. We had revival in the middle of that. Last week, we talked about blessing somebody, and here this week is kind of the final challenge week 
And the challenge is that you don't hide from your own flesh. I, I remember in the old shows, you remember how it used to be in the old days, or, or at least on Little House on the Prairie anyways, the, the, that TV show, or in the, the shows like that, when you were, when something awkward happened, you know how it was. Eat your food. May I, may I be dismissed? You know what I'm saying? You, you know the, the old show, may I be dismissed? And then you, you get up and you leave. And you leave, the, you leave the family. There's something awkward that happened. It's something bad. There's anger. There's maybe embarrassment. There's all the things that happen. And you have to say, may I be dismissed? And you go dismissed. And I, I don't know why I was just thinking about that as I was thinking about hiding from your own flesh. Because in this segment, the challenge is for you to reconnect back again with somebody in your family, somebody that you love, or at least you used to love. I'm going to focus on that for a minute. I'm talking, and God will help, God will help all of us with this. God is going to help you see, think about somebody in your family that you need to reconnect with. It says, hide not thyself from thine own flesh. In a lot of senses, you may have said, Lord, may I be dismissed? And you walked out. And the Lord may not have actually said, yes, you may. May I be dismissed? I'm out of here. I'm, I'm no longer having anything to do with him. I'm no longer having anything to do with her. We're done, all right? And we'll work through this a little bit this morning, but as I preach, I'm, I, I just want to hang here just for a moment so, so the Lord can really help you figure out who that person is. It might be a couple people. Let's look at the verse here a little bit. It says, it says that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. When it, when it says hide here, it's, it's, it's a simple definition. It means to veil from sight. It's, I have ought against my whoever, and I don't want to see them. I don't want to have anything to do with them. I, we're, we're hidden. We're hidden. You've played hit hide and seek before. Some of y'all have been hiding from some of your family for years. And we giggle at some of it, some of that, but some you know you know what I'm talking about. Maybe you don't, but I have a feeling that there are many here that have been hiding from somebody in their family for years, for various reasons. <clears throat> My aim this morning is to do a couple things. Let me give you the aim, and then and then let me back up and keep preaching. Just want to kind of give you the goal where I'm trying to head today. To establish the line. Let me just say that for, for note's sake. To establish the line, one. And what, what I mean by line is I mean the line in the sand, the boundary line. I'll talk about that in a minute. And then number two is to extend the line. And then the, li the line that I mean by that is the line that helps you get connected again. And, and pull that person back in. We went tubing the other day, and somebody's floating out in the, in the lake, and you throw them the line, and they grab hold of it, and you can pull them back in. To, so the thought is to extend the line so that that person can grab hold of it, and you can pull them in. Okay? So establish the line and extend the line. But first here, just let me just remind you of something. It was important for God for families to stay together. You, you know that. It, it's, it's, it's part of God's plan. When God said, uh, for what, when the Bible says, for what God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. We, we think it's a man and a woman, and it is, but what do they produce? And do you think that God's plan was just that we would stop at the husband and wife and then anything that came after them? It's cool if man puts that asunder. No. Oh. God's plan is to create a family that mom and dad stay together. 
And I'm, I'm preaching to half, half our congregation is divorced and remarried. I get it. God, don't, aren't you thankful God is a God of redemption, reconciliation, all the things that start with R-E? He is. So I'm just saying, wherever you are today, let's just say for right now, today, as today going forward, God's plan is for you to stay together. You with me? But God's plan is to create a family and they stay together. And, and then if God blesses them with kids, that the family stays together. And when I, I don't mean live in the same house their whole life. I just mean stay together. God's plan isn't that brothers and sisters would hate each other through the years. So as I go through this, let me ask you a few things. I wrote down in my notes originally in, in preparation for this message, I wrote, I started writing, how we hide. How we hide from each other. You know, and I was just, I was even getting into the dumb little things like unfollow on Facebook and like all the, but then, okay, that's, that's secondary. Let's talk about what's, what really matters. Why do we hide from each other? Why would somebody hide from their own flesh? Why would somebody want to veil themselves? Uh, may I be dismissed from my brother? Now, let me scan the crowd real quick. Let's get real. There are things that happen between siblings that should never happen. But I think there's a reason why this is the last thing in the list too, because we've already talked about forgiveness. Why don't you talk to your brother anymore? Why don't you want to have anything to do with your sister? I'm just, if the shoe fits, wear it for a second. What's wrong between you and mom? What's wrong between you and dad? What's the issue with your uncle? What's the issue with your aunt? What about that cousin? Stepbrother, stepsister, step... You, you can go on and on. God has put certain people in our lives for a reason. You say, well, I'm embarrassed of how they live their life. I mean, there's some, there's some, there's some truth to that sometimes. You know what I mean? Especially if you're a, a firm Christian and you've got somebody that is living the other way. I'll get to that in a second. They're not living the way the Bible says. I'm embarrassed. I disagree with them. I don't want the drama that I've been involved with through the years. I've been burnt one too many times from that person. I've been hurt. One too many times for that person, from that person. Maybe they just make me mad and I can't stand them. And the thought of this person just makes you, oh! and the preachers out there making me feel like I got to maybe halfway get right with somebody. Do you think God wants people to get right with each other? Seriously, do you think God wants people to get right with one another? I really do. It really talks a lot about it. So let's get off. Quit giving me the heat. God wants it. God wants it. So who is that person? But I missed one of the whys. I didn't say one that came to my mind why we hide. I think sometimes we hide. You got your boots on? You got your steel toe boots on? As Alex likes to say, sometimes you hide because you're not right with the Lord. Because you're not right with the Lord. God wants you to make it right. But you just don't want to. Let's walk through this. <clears throat> Number one, let's establish the line. Let's establish the line. Look at uh, 1 Corinthians 5. Go to 1 Corinthians and remember, I, I said, when I said uh, aim is to do two things today, establish the line and throw the line, cast the line. There's a verse in 2 Corinthians that gets asked, and it's a very fair question to ask. Paul said it. He says, what communion hath light with darkness? 
That's a, that's a pretty fair question to ask. What communion hath light with darkness? I mean, if I'm, if I'm in the light as he is in the light, if I'm walking with the Lord, if I am letting my light so shine and all these things, and my family member over here is doing something so dark and so twisted and so ungodly, what kind of communion can I have with that person? And here, here preaches up here saying, we need to not hide from our own flesh anymore. We need to get right with them. So what communion? All right, that's a good, fair question. That's a fair question. All right. So in 1 Corinthians, he, says, he asked that question in 2 Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians, though, uh, I think it was in chapter 6 in 2 Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians, he said um, this, 1 Corinthians 5, 11. But now I have written unto you not to keep company... If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner with such a one, know not to eat. Okay, now I know he's talking about brothers and sisters in Christ here, and I'm making references also to family who might even be lost, okay? And, and so when I'm saying establish the line, I'm saying it's, it's something that we need to establish. Here's a line. Or it might be a boundary, a circle, where you say, okay, to my, to my lost so-and-so or to my brother who's living in sin, brother in Christ who's living in sin, here's the line, I can come here, but no further. And if you're willing to meet me near the line, and again, I'm going to show you, tell you a second, we're willing to cast out a, we're willing to cast out a rope to pull them. You with me? If you're willing to meet me at the line, here's the good thing about the line. Sometimes we just don't even want to establish the line because we don't want to have anything to do with that person. We're hiding from our own flesh. Now listen, in, the, in that Isaiah 58 text, if we want all those blessings, I really feel like we need to get all the things right. So we establish a line and you, we say, you know what? You've, but we use, the, we use the reasons why we're hiding and we turn them around and we turn them into things that help us establish the line, okay? So we, we've been burnt one too many times, and we go, hi, no, use that to establish the line. I'm not going to get burnt that way anymore, so this is going to be part of the line. I've, I, I don't agree with what you're doing, but instead of going and hiding forever, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this line even more prominent that, hey, I have nothing to do with that, but I'm here. You with me? We, you would just establish a line. <clears throat> and I just wrote down quickly, I said, let God help you establish the line. Let God help you establish the line. That, now, that, that takes some intentionality, doesn't it? Uh, part of the intentionality that that's going to take is okay. I got to get right with somebody or I at least have to make the situation one which would allow me to reach that person for God's glory. I have to set this up in some way. I have to care enough about that person so that God could be glorified. Maybe somebody could be redeemed. Maybe a backslider could come back. And I'm unmovable on the rock, in my faith, but, at the, but maybe even near the boundary line at times, just so I can reach out and grab somebody. You with me? So establish the line. Number two is uh, extend the line. Extend the line. Now I know, and it's simple, that... Fractures happen because of sin. Somebody went against God's plan for a husband and wife or for a family. Oh, let me, let me throw this in. I said husband and wife. You might even be hiding from your own spouse. You might be hiding from your own flesh. Do you think God's plan is for a, a husband and a wife and notice I said a husband 
and a wife, a man, and a woman. Pride Month. Let's just get real. Men should marry women, and women should marry men. Man, we hear it the opposite everywhere we go. Hopefully that refreshes you and doesn't make you feel like you're out on an island when you hear preachers say it and affirm your beliefs. But we, we're over here and, and we're married and, and sometimes we can just, we'll be together, but may I be dismissed. Do you think God wants that either? No. No. Stop hiding from your spouse. That we could go on with that one. But I understand that problems emerge in the families and families and separations of people hide from your own flesh because somebody did something stupid, let's just say. Somebody did something bad. Somebody did something sinful. Somebody has done something to cause a major amount of frictions that causes two people to want to separate and not have, want to have anything to do with each other. Again, it might be something you disagree with. It could, it, it could be drugs. You, you've seen many people, families just separate because of some kind of substance abuse. Do you think, now honestly ask yourself this, do you genuinely think that God would want you, a child of God, to completely disconnect and want to have nothing to do with that family member of yours that is addicted to something. Let me ask you, if, if you think, if your quick response is, yeah, well, sure, who is going to be the one to bring that person back to the Lord? Who's next in line? If you, child of God, are willing to just write them off for good, who's the one that's going to bring them back to God? You say, my... my my child is like this. I talked to a man once. His, his son was, and I'm not, just, I'm not just trying to kick this one today. I'm just, God just gave me this, and so I'm going to preach it. Um, his son uh, was uh, homosexual. And this man was a man of God. The dad was a man of God. And I remember talking with him. I've, I've told you this before. And I said, how do you, how do you work with that? And he said, I'm going to love him till the day he dies. He, and I remember him saying this. He says, because if I stop, he'll never come back home. Guess what? A few years later, that man repented of that, turns around, and he comes back to the Lord. Does he still struggle with some of that stuff? I'm sure he probably does. But he keeps giving it to God. And he's got a dad. And they love each other. I had lunch with him last week. Awesome testimony. But you can imagine, though, they do that. Where's the match? Where's the gas? Let's burn this bridge, baby. That's not the mentality we need to have as a Christian. Keep the bridge there, but your line might be here. And you're willing to sound the call. You're willing to toss the line. You're willing to do anything you want within your, what you know to be true to the Lord. But you're not burning that bridge down. Too many people are willing to just burn that bridge down, walk away, not even give it a care in the world. Well, he's in your hands now, Lord. And the Lord's like, well, I was hoping that you'd be around. <clears throat> so we establish the line. We extend the line. I hope this can go to uh, Psalms 142. Hopefully this person, the person that God might have on your heart. Now, if, if the Lord hasn't given you somebody on your heart already, that's a beautiful thing. Praise God. Praise God. But if he's got somebody on your heart that you need to get reunited with in some way, and I'm challenging you to toss the line in some way, and, and, and maybe I'll, God will give me something practical in a second, but I, just, I pray that this person 
could never say this. The person that God has in your heart, hopefully they could never say what he says in Psalm 142, 4, it says, I looked on my right hand and beheld, but there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. You might be that last thing that could bring that loved one, and I'm just going to call them a loved one, even though they might not be too loved in your eyes right now. You might be the last person, that last loved one be able to bring that person to Jesus. And they may be here crying out the same thing, nobody cares for my soul. How could you this week, this is the challenge this week, this is this week's fast, how could you this week throw a line out that'll be between you and God? I can't give you every way that that works out. It might just be some little thing, some way where that person could know you're still around. It might even be, I'm sorry, I've hid from you for all these years. Will you forgive me? The Lord has convicted me, and you could say this honestly, if you're doing this, if you're feeling it right now, the Lord has convicted me that I need to reach back out to you. Hmm. And remember Paul, he said, uh, most gladly will I rather, something along the lines of, I, I'll be, I will spend and be spent for you. He was willing to, I'll spend my, I'll exhaust myself for you. And again, it might come back to forgiveness before you'll be willing to reach out to that person. It might have to be just you getting right with God. Family issues are age old. You know that, right? Family issues? We've been having family issues since the beginning. Remember Adam blame shifting to his wife? Cain killing Abel? Jacob and Esau? Remember? Lot selling his wives off. Abraham selling out his wife a couple times. I mean, there's all kinds of issues that you can think of. Sibling issues, marital issues, parent-kid issues, friend issues. I mean, you can go through the, the whole Bible and see different, different kinds of issues there. But don't you know that God wants this to come back? Isn't it a beautiful thing when, when two people that are at odds can kind of come back and be able to live together. I don't mean the same how. I mean live peaceably. I like that verse in Romans, as much as lieth within you, live peaceably with all men. Now a lot of people just like to use that one as their way out. As much as lieth within me, I'll live peaceably, but if I can, I'm gone, and I got a verse to back. But as much as lieth within you, that's a whole lot of effort. It's a lot of effort. We go to six, um, Isaiah or Galatians six ten. I'll be done in just a second. Galatians six ten. Look at this. <clears throat> very a very pointed challenge this morning. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. If you're in that vicinity. Galatians 6, 10 says, As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto who? All men, especially unto them who are of the what? Uh, so did you see who at that encompass first? All men, and then especially who? All right. So we know we're supposed to especially do good, be good to our brothers and sisters in Christ, but we're also supposed to do that with everybody else. Kind of seems like God just wants us to be a good person all around, doesn't it? But he says, as we therefore have opportunity, can I just, uh, I, I just want to give you my definition of that. I didn't look this up. Why well, you still have breath in your lungs. 
as we have opportunity. Do good unto all men. As long as you are able to get up and get out of bed, there's your opportunity. Maybe if you have a better definition for that, we can talk after church. I just think that kind of means if you're alive, <laughs> do good. There's a verse. Let me, let, me, let me read a quote, and then I'll read a verse, and I'll be done. Uh, I like um, what one commentator said. He said, those who do justly and love mercy shall have the comfort, even in this world, good works will bring the blessings of God, provided they are done from love to God and man, and wrought in the soul by the Holy Spirit. I'll read that one more time. Good works will bring the blessings of God, provided they are done from a love to God and a love to man, and they are wrought by the Holy Spirit. Let me read one more verse and I'll preach for 27 more minutes and read several more verses and close in about an hour. Now look at Isaiah 1 real quick. This, this really has less to do with the, the pointed challenge this morning, but it, it has to do with the hiding. It was one of the verses I stumbled on when I was looking up hide not and it has that in it it's on isaiah 115 god had just got done telling his people just like in the god fast remember he how they said we've done this and we've fasted and we've afflicted ourselves and we've done this he's like did i ask you to fast that way and then when we get into verse 6 in isaiah 58 he says is not this the fast that i have chosen and that's the god fast and so before that, he, God had already been addressing that kind of mentality. Well, we're doing this, and we're doing this, and God's like, stop doing that and do this. And that's what he's getting at here. He says in uh, Isaiah 115, and when you spread forth your hands, this is like people that, that are all about like, hey, I'm, wor I'm a worshiper of Jesus, but then over here and outside of that time, they're not living, right? You know, that kind of person. So... Um, and when you spread forth your hands, I will hide what my eyes from you. And when you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Isn't that a scary verse to think about? He says, you're going to make you're going to make many prayers. I will not hear. I'll hide my eyes from you. These are people that all they want is to just God to flow to him, and it just stops. And God said, no, the, the whole purpose of this is for me to flow to you and then through you, and then you'll hear regularly from me. But if all you want is to just live for yourself and just, um, just suck out all my resources, I will hide my eyes. Aren't you thankful that the Lord didn't hide from us? Aren't you thankful that Jesus didn't say, May I be dismissed, Father? Aren't you thankful for that? And I was thinking about how we're created in His image. When He says, let us make man in our image and, and after our likeness, and He makes man in, in His own image. And then I'm thinking of Jesus becoming flesh and dwelling among us and the people beholding His glory, the glories of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And I'm thinking about this. I'm like, man, I'm so thankful that Jesus didn't hide from his own flesh that he could see. Matter of fact, he didn't just hide from his flesh. He laid his flesh down for his people, for the world. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you need to get to know him today. You might be the one that's sitting back here being like, you know what, I've just kind of been hiding from a relationship with God. I, I, I know that maybe if I just block what all my friends and maybe my Christian family are doing over here, if I just block that, it's just not existing. I can stay over here in my world that I'm living in and, and I like it just how I got it and all these things. And, and man, maybe you just need to like drop, drop the blinders and look at Jesus who was willing to come and lay down his flesh, turn his back to be ripped open and hung on that cross so that you could have a home in heaven. And so this morning, 
you might be one. You might be sitting here thinking, who does God need me to reconnect with today? But you also might be sitting here thinking, man, I need to connect with Jesus Christ this morning. I need to be saved today. Let's make that happen right now. As everybody bows their head and closes their eyes, maybe God's got somebody on your heart. Would you come deal with that at the altar right now? There's just something about kneeling down before God that seals some things. Maybe God's got somebody on your heart. Would you come and deal with that right now? God told me to not say another word until somebody comes and makes a move because I think somebody needs to make a move. look up at me just be honest I'm not going to point you at or embarrass you just look at me say I don't really know that if I died today I'd go to heaven but I sure would like to know I sure would like to be saved before I leave here today if that's you just look at me just so I know who I'm talking to the kids come out and be able to watch that and if you notice uh well i like the kids involved in everything because we're training them amen amen here come on
man. Say hi to everybody. I had a few more. I thought there were more kids back there than that. All right. You can go ahead and sit down. This is, now you can't see her. That's why I wanted to say hi. All right, there you go. There you go. This is Corey. Corey, have you been saved? Do you want to live for Jesus for the rest of your life? All right. Upon your profession of faith, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, buried in the likeness of his death, and raised in the likeness of his resurrection. God is good. Amen. I'm going to ask her daddy to close us in prayer. Would you close us in prayer? Love you all.